Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Anybody who saw my two last videos, uh, one of them about how to assemble an AR upper and the other one being how to assemble an AR lower, it was piecing together this budget build that I put together for my sister-in-law at the request of my brother-in-law who wanted something uh, to be solve something solid for his wife to shoot and get him familiar with ar-15 so in today's video i'm going to go over uh, the basic components of it and how and why i chose some of the uh, components that when i piece it together so my brother-in-law approached me a couple months ago and said that he wanted to uh, get his wife, who is familiar with handguns, uh, yeah, has some decent familiarity. She can actually shoot them pretty well. Um, he wants to get her more comfortable with AR-15s. Um, you know, in today's day and age, uh, especially in the, the climate that we're currently in, I think millions of other Americans would agree that having something and not needing it is better than needing it and not having it. So um, his particular AR, it's a little bit of a heavier one. It's got a quad rail on it. She's not really super comfortable shooting it. Um, so the AR that I ended up putting together for my, my wife, um, a little bit of a lighter weight one, and that's what he was interested in wanting to get. Uh, he did also want to make sure that we weren't buying or putting together a turd. Um, he's not he likes guns, he enjoys them, he is a Marine. Uh, he doesn't know all the ins and outs of them, so, which is why he came to me. He does know that cheap things are cheap for reasons and expensive things are expensive for a reason and that, you know, there is a big difference between a $350, $550 AR, $1,000 AR and so on and so on. So again, he wanted something that was gonna be a little bit light. Uh, but he wanted something that was going to be a little bit more on a budget, but without sacrificing quality part. So, um, you know, spending other people's money is always a good time. Um, it's, it's been a while since I put something together that was a little bit more budget minded uh, for myself. Um, and definitely have never done a budget build from complete, you know, small parts and turn it into a full gun. So uh, doing a little bit of research into it, uh, you know, starting with the starting with the receivers. I knew that I didn't want to buy anything like Palmetto State Armory. And if you have one, hey, listen, I'm not, not knocking you. My wife lowers a Palmetto State Armory. Uh, my first AR, uh, once I got back into the game, you know, a few years ago, uh, was a Palmetto State Armory, complete upper, complete lower. But uh, I wanted to do something a little bit better. Uh, so I went through with the Centurion. Um, ended up picking up from AR15Discounts.com. Uh, they had a deal on it along with a discount code at the time. I think you got the upper and the lower. Uh, it was something like 202 bucks. So in my mind, getting something that was that inexpensive, um, why not go with something that was definitely going to be solid, you know, has a pretty cool roll mark on it. The upper receiver, you've got the little, you've got the bullet and on the back side of it, sorry, on the lower receiver side of it, you've got that CM4 with the Centurion Arms bullet on there as well. So uh, that was my decision in going with or why I went with Centurion Arms. Plus, you know, they definitely just make really cool stuff. Now, when it comes to... Um, reducing weight or I should say have building something up that's a little bit lighter a uh, big part of that's going to be is is going to be the barrel um, obviously if you get a heavy barrel um, it's going to have a lot more weight to it you know my first inclination was to go with a pencil barrel uh, though I know that they do definitely have their cons to them um, I, I've never previously had a pencil barrel um, from what I had read and gathered they are great for weight, uh, but if you're doing heavy strings of fire, high rates of fire, uh, they will lose their accuracy just due to the fact that they heat up very quickly. Don't know to what extent, though I do know that, you know, my sister-in-law, she's not going to be out there just blasting away. So initially, um, going, going to go with a pencil weight, start looking around, and again, you know, barrel choice is 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 key when you're building an ar the the you know your barrel is the heart of your rifle the bulk hair groups the heartbeat um i should say that's really the soul of your of your rifle so that being said my my first typical choices would be you know a criterion core uh, maybe a centurion barrel but there definitely was going to be more money than what my brother-in-law wanted to pay so I started looking at something like Roscoe's and Faxon. So hear a lot of good things on the interwebs and forums about Faxon barrels. Um, I do know that they make a pencil barrel, but then I'd also been hearing a lot about what's called the gunner barrel. And the gunner barrel is offered by Faxon. It's kind of a combination between the pencil and a government profile. So, and again, going back, my brother-in-law wanted to 
weld something sim very similar to what my wife has. Now she's got a 14 and a half inch pin and weld. Um, but that barrel is a government profile. So I was like, okay, so if she can likes the weight of a government, uh, but he still again wanted to try to get a little bit more on the lighter side. Um, I figured that gunner might be a good choice. Now, allegedly, if I remember correctly, the gunner barrel, it is like a government profile up to the gas block, maybe even a little further back, but then it's like pencil going for, as you see, very, very narrow uh, barrel up there. So again, hearing some uh, really good reviews on it. And then once I started actually looking for them, I saw that Faxon offered the barrel with a uh, pre-drilled uh, pre, uh, pre gas block for it. So um, seemed like a pretty big, uh, like a no-brainer. You know, I've got other builds that are, the gas blocks are only secured with set screws. And, you know, based on several manufacturers that agree that, um, at least based on the YouTube videos I've seen put out by some of the manufacturers, such as Criterion, definitely feel that um, as long as properly installed in the barrel dimple, that two set screws are perfectly good enough to hold on a gas block. But uh, a pin gas block is even better. So for what I could pick this up at, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. I got it from Joe Bob. Uh, Joe Bob Outfitters, I, I want to say it was something like 170 bucks for the barrel along with the pre-pinned gas block. So that was the route I decided to go with that. <laughs> and then going on to the handguard, again, trying to get something that was a little bit on the lighter side, um, but also, uh, you know, something that was going to be a little bit narrow. Uh, my sister-in-law is a smaller woman, um, or lighter stature. It's very similar to my wife. Uh, my wife's gun, it has a ballistic advantage um, handguard on it, which is really just kind of like the uh, Aero Precision Atlas one, I believe. Um, not really a super huge fan of that high handguard, so I started looking around. I saw that Midwest Industries, um, which, you know, they're known to make some really, really solid handguards. Um, they offer what they call Slimline. So this one here is a 12.625 inch uh, handguard. Uh, this one, I believe I got from Valhalla Tactical for... It was really inexpensive. I, I want to say it was like 130 bucks. So as you see, you got M-lock M slots at three, six, and nine. Um, Picatinny rail full length going all the way across. Uh, these are just, you know, for lightning holes. They are not M-lock um, slots themselves. And then there is also a sling mount uh, over here. So specs on it, you know, not the lightest handguard in the world, but definitely not chunky. Uh, and then also very narrow for her smaller hands to be able to grip this a little bit better. So that you know, considering Midwest Industries' uh, reputation for making some pretty solid stuff for a good price, um, seemed to check all the blocks for what I wanted with a handguard. So that was the reason uh, that I chose it. And it is pretty, um, I like it. It is pretty nice. Uh, Bolt Carrier Group, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, Standard, Phosphate. Um, you know, these things definitely have been tried and true. Uh, make some really, really solid BCGs. You know, could... Could I got some cheaper ones, maybe like a Micro Best. I think the rumor is out there that Micro Best makes them for Sons of Liberty Gunworks anyway, uh, just to their specs. But, um, you know, maybe I could have saved $50, $60 there, but, you know, wanted to go with the Sons of Liberty Gunworks. It's uh, one that I convinced my brother-in-law to change out in his gun, uh, which he had in our guns, BCG, before that. So convinced him to buy one of the old ones I had I wasn't using, so same reason why, or that's the reason why I went with it. Now, when it came to the small parts, you know, everything was just, you know, I wanted to just be standard GI mil spec type stuff. Uh, didn't need anything fancy like four control designs or, or any of that stuff. So going with the lower parts kit, I chose the Sons of Liberty Gunworks blaster guts. And I went with that because not only did you also get the grip in there, but it also came with the Liberty Fighting Trigger. Uh, one of my early, early videos, I had the Liberty Fighting Trigger comparison and, uh, along with some other um, single stage offerings from Guys Lee, um, from my LaRue MBT1. Um, again, she wasn't going to need anything fancy, um, but it's, you know, and, and the Liberty fan, uh, Fighting Trigger is not fancy at all. I think, it's, I believe it's made by Schmid. Um, it is a single stage trigger. Uh, trigger pull, uh, weight on it, it's about six, six and a half pounds, so nothing super light, but a little upgrade. Throw together in the pack, you know, you got all the things like the takedown pins, um, obviously trigger pins, and oh, and it did also come with the uh, B5 Systems Type 23 grip. Big fan of this grip, typically run the Type 22, which has a little bit more uh, straighter grip on it, but um, this I, I do like this one as well. And then all your standard stuff like the safety. Uh, the magazine release, the bolt catch, everything is just your standard GI stuff. Um, 
And then when it came to finishing it up with the buffer tube, the Q or end plate, the castle nut, along with the um, buffer spring and buffer itself, I decided to go with Expo Arms. Anybody who's not familiar with Expo Arms, they are primary arms house brand. Um, not sure if they make their own stuff, but they're known to be just really your good standard uh, mill spec stuff made out of the right materials, uh, just decent overall stuff that comes at a pretty good price. So uh, that kind of finished it off with the small parts. With the exception of the forward assist, the uh, ejection port cover, and then the gas tube, uh, that was all BCM. Uh, I, I believe that the Expo Arms parts were sold out, so I just went with them instead. Again, just good, solid, um, mil-spec GI type stuff. For the uh, carbine weight for this one, I decided to go with a uh, just a standard heavy buffer or H1. Um, this is against a 16 inch barrel and it is mid-length gas. Uh, and I figured that, you know, an H point to me or an H buffer is a good, a good starting point. Um, thought about maybe doing H1, even thought about doing carbine, but went with the H was, uh, and it runs very well. For buttstock, Magpul CTR, I did have one of these uh, brand new in a box sitting in my closet. So I figured we can go ahead and throw that one on there. Uh, when I put together my 11 and 5 that I did a quick overview of, um, you know, I bought the, um, I mod stock and I bought this at the same time because I was not sure which one uh, that I wanted to go with. Uh, ended up going as the Bull Tour on my 11.5, so this one went on here. Um, charging handle, that is again, that's just a standard Expo Arms mill spec. Uh, and then moving on to the um, sighting systems along with the, the weapon light. So I did convince my brother to, brother in law to get a um, Cloud Defense Rain 3.0 on his previous, or his AR. He was previously running his military issued Surefire, I believe it was a 951. So, um, you know, the output comparison between these two is just absolutely night and day. Uh, he really loved the Cloud Defense Rain 3.0 for his gun, so he wanted the same one. Uh, for his wife's gun, for the mount, I went with the Cloud Defense Torrent mount, which is very similar uh, to the Haley Strategic um, Thorntail. Allows that to push out a little bit. Now, typically, I would have ran this uh, one slot forward to get a little further out on the muzzle. But with my sister-in-law's smaller stature, and I base this on how my wife would grab the gun, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty much maxed out when it comes to the length of the pressure cord switch or pressure switch cord. Uh, so I did have to pull it back a little bit in order to get the pressure switch mounted in a place where her hand is going to be. For iron sights, I did already have this fixed Midwest Industry solid front sight, uh, and along with this Yankee Hill machine folder on the rear, so I went ahead and threw those on there. And then choosing a optic for it. So for the red dot on my wife's gun, I do have a Hollow Sun 515 GM. This site is a super solid site. I know um, Hollow Sun makes other sites that are cheaper and are also very solid. Um, but the 515 GM, it's known as their military grade optic. Uh, you see it's very similar to a T2. Um, this is also what um, the Estonian military puts or optic that they use on their LMT rifle. So again, I have one on my wife's gun. I've been very happy with it. Um, does not the GM model does not have that solar panel option on top. I'm really not a fan of solar um, solar solar panel option. Um, gives you your standard stuff like the uh, the um, reticle choice between having the circle dot or just a single dot. And that's pretty cool. Comes with these scope caps along with a built-in uh, anti-reflective device. Um, shares the same footprint as the uh, Aimpoint T2 micros. Uh, though I will say that these sit a little bit higher than T2s. The bottom is a little bit taller. So if you're gonna go buy one of these and you wanna upgrade the uh, mount on it themselves, um, I found out the hard way when I bought my wife's that I bought a lower third mount for it uh, and I could no longer use my iron sights. I could only see like the tips of the protective ears and then after going and doing some digging, learn that these do sit a little bit higher. So if you want lower third co-witness, um, you want to buy like an absolute height mount and that will give you more of a lower third. So just something to keep in mind, especially if you're picking out... Um, you know, maybe an option like a Unity. I mean, you want to put these on a Unity uh, mount, uh, and, and it's you know it's going to be higher actually than 2.26. And if you're running a magnifier behind it, 
Um, on a unity mount, they are not going to match up. They're going to be slightly mismatched. Um, moving on to the magnifier, he did also want a magnifier. He really likes uh, the flip side option. Um, you know, typically I run G45s in the past. I have run G33s, which I have done videos on comparisons. Uh, but of course, he wasn't going to spend EOTech money on that. And I hear really, really great things about the Vortex Micro. There's many people that you see in the forums that will say that actually the uh, Vortex Micro is clearer and better than the um, EOTech G33. I don't have a G33 anymore to compare it to. I, I wish I kind of did so I would be able to show kind of a side-by-side -side between the two of them. Uh, but once I tried my G4 or tried a G45, I got rid of all of my G33s and ended up switching over to G45. But it is very solid. Uh, taking it to the range and, and, and test fired it. And I do, it's it's a lot of, it's a really good magnifier for those who are on a budget. Um, it, it, you know, again, flipped aside. And I do like this mount here where it does not require a push button like some other, other uh, mounts are. Um, UOTech not being one of them, but it just simply works on tension. You uh, flip it back and forth. It comes with various shims to get it at various heights. Um, and I've been pretty happy with it and bought this one here from MidwestOptics.com. Um, they had this feature where you could request a quote and they emailed it to you. I want to say the list price on it was, um, 230 or 300. Uh, and then it got, it got it down to like 265. So, um, that's about that for the optic. And then lastly, I didn't mention the, uh, muzzle device on here. So knowing that, you know, my brother-in-law doesn't have a can. Um, he does have a pin and welded uh, suppressor mount on there. I don't remember which one it is up the top of my head. That's why he bought it from a friend of his. But for her, you can keep things on a budget. A2 flash hider, $10 part. It does a very effective job at reducing flash. So I figure you'll be able to save some money there uh, and just sticking with it and um, keeping the weight down. You know, not having a big long suppressor mount or flash hider just for the looks, especially if you're not running a can, uh, seem, pretty, seem pretty pointless to me. So now let's talk about overall price. Uh, I can just tell you for the gun itself, just, you know, components now, no weapon light, no sights. All together, uh, I piece, piece it together for a little under a grand. Um, and there's some of you may be saying, well, you know, I can go buy an IWI Zion 15 for 828 bucks and so on. You know, I can find this, I can find that. And that is true. Um, but you won't be able to get maybe, you might be paying for components that you don't want to get. So, you know, I can tell you as being a previous, uh, Zion 15 old owner, um, not exactly the lightest weight. So again, I think building this thing, something to, to the specs that you want it to be, or somebody wants it to be, um, building them and being able to hand pick them out ends up paying it off a little bit better in the long run. Again, instead of you buying something and paying for parts that you're not going to use, you're going to take off and just replace them anyway. So um, optics added and flashlight added about another 850 bucks to it. So kind of funny that that, that adds up to almost the entire price of the rifle. Um, but, you know, that's that's the game that we're in. This is the, it's not definitely not cheap. So anyways, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and again, just kind of giving an overview of, of how and why I chose some of the components. So maybe if anybody out there who's watching this video is, uh, considering doing something similar, or even just wants to know about some of the individual components and how they would look overall, I am pretty happy with how this gun turned out. Of course, when you do any build, you never know, uh, how it's going to run. So, uh, took it to the range freshly after I got it built. Uh, probably put about 80 or 100 rounds through it. Uh, didn't have any issues whatsoever. I know somebody may be looking at the uh, shell deflector and thinking you didn't even fire that thing. But considering that this was going to be a gift for the sister-in-law, what I did, I put a piece of duct tape over here. So I'm trying to really minimize any type of wear uh, marks on it whatsoever. So ran pretty good. Uh, drop a little drop a little video of it with my wife shooting it. see uh in comparison if you're looking to build a gun for your wife um mine is five foot three so the gun looks giant in her hands but uh, it handles very well overall weight on the gun unloaded with the magnifier and weapon light and everything on it 
was 7.8 pounds. So not the lightest that could possibly get it, but it feels definitely very handy. And again, my wife can, uh, she feels it feels very handy in her hands and nothing that's too heavy. The magnifier itself weighs about, I think 10 or 11 ounces. So that would remove about two, three, two, three quarters of a pound. if she wanted to take that off and make it a little bit lighter. Um, but that's it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like, subscribe, share the content. Definitely appreciate all the, um, the, the viewers and comments that I've been getting so far and see you in the next one. Thanks.